We are delighted to inform that we're being joined now by Maya Stark. She's joining us live from Thailand. She's there for the Honda LPGA Thailand, which kicks off tomorrow. Uh, her background is interesting. Hailing from Sweden, she played her college golf at Oklahoma State, where she rose as high as sixth in the amateur rankings. She turned professional in 2021, won two of her first three starts as a pro on the LET. Maya is still only 24 years old. She already has eight professional wins of them on the LET, one of them on the LPGA Tour. No doubt you remember her, too, from the last European Solheim Cup squad where she went 2-1-1 one, and one in her first appearance, taking down major champ Allison Corpoots in singles by a score of 2-1. to one. Maya, how are you? Welcome to the program. What time is it where you are in Thailand? I am good. How are you? Um, it, it is... 8.30 at night. Not All right, so not too bad, but how quickly are you able to adjust when you're going through multiple time zones? I'm assuming you just had dinner recently. What time is your body right now, or, or do you tend to travel pretty well and adjust easily? Um, it's usually easier because we always, well, at least I live at home still in Sweden, so I usually just travel west to go play tournaments, and that's always easier. But I'm, I don't know. I think I've just been so tired coming here, so I'm pretty ready for bed. But that's usually not the case going east. Well, we'll try not to keep you up too late then your time, as it's it's just after eight thirty a.m. East Coast for us. When you live at home in Sweden, do you just block huge amounts of time that you're going to plan on being on the road? Or otherwise, how do you keep your game from getting rusty when it's cold and snowy out? Um, well, on the Swedish team, we've always been um, working periodically, I guess. I don't know if you say that, but um, so we go, we say, you're not going to lose much if you don't practice putting for a month. Uh, but you're going to gain a lot if you work on your irons for a month straight. So um, it's, I mean, my coach thinks it's a great thing to have a couple of months off um, and just being able to be indoors and hit and work a lot on uh, the gym stuff. So um, it doesn't really get very rusty. I feel like it takes maybe a day or two when you're outside and you're able to hit chips and putts, but then you're back to where you were. And how how much are you, have you been traveling so that you're actually out there on a real golf course hitting these shots and, and preparing versus how much time do you off have, say, around the holidays and the start of the new year? I didn't do much. I was mostly just at home. We had a camp in Phoenix with the Swedish golf team the week before TOC. So um, that's pretty much the only thing I did. I mean, we I did spend two weeks in the U.S. after CME, like the finals, but um, I didn't do anything. I barely touched the club. So what do you, what do you do, what's how do you spend your time during those cold cold months in Sweden? Do you like to read? Is it watching streaming services or or how do you occupy yourself? Uh, the answer is yes to all those questions. Um, I mean, there's only so much you can hit and so for so long because your body just can't take much more than two, three hours a day of just hitting balls. So it's a lot of... Um, I started painting last winter, so I did some of that. But um, it's been a lot of just maybe planning for next year doing financial stuff, fixing fixing some of those things too. Do you find that maintaining your life at home gives you stability and helps you find kind of a emotionally a firm ground when you're out competing? Yeah, def definitely. You don't want anything to be worrying you outside of golf, I guess. Uh, that's not a very comfortable position. I have tended in the past to play pretty well when I have had tumultuous weeks, but I outside of the course. But I don't, I don't want to have that. Um, so yeah, it definitely helps when you have kind of a calm mind going into a tournament. What is it, Maya, about? 
professional players now coming out of Sweden. I mean, there was a time when it was not a normal thing just to expect that tour players would be coming out of Sweden with regularity. I think now you have to go back at least 20 years, maybe 30 years to get to that point. But it's a regular occurrence now with what is happening. You've mentioned multiple times uh, the Swedish team that's behind it. Could you talk to us about your inspirations and the infrastructure that exists in the country now to help you guys evolve? Yeah, I think it, they're really good at creating the community so everyone will kind of meet everyone. It's um, very different in the US, I guess, because it's just so big and you can't really call people for a camp um, every other month when it's not actually for the national team. So in the, on the Swedish team, you have the for the girls part, you have the super camps, which are just regional, where they get local coaches. And then you get uh, coaches from the federation who maybe have some more knowledge of how just the national team works. So they come in with that knowledge. And then you get the girl, girls future at team or camps, where you have a lot of different girls um, coming in, but meeting with coaches from the national team and you learn how the national team practices and plays kind of or what's what the average is of the national team players and then you go up to the girls national team so I feel like there's a lot of initiatives to help everyone and not just the top of the top um, and it all comes from like the same organization which uh, I think has been helpful because then everyone gets the same info. Maya, who was your hero? Who was your inspiration? You know, I didn't have that many like golf um, idols, but I think lately Tiger has just been the one. I've started watching the Chasing 82 on YouTube. So I just go through all of his wins and just look at little documentaries of that. That is very cool. When you said you're a reader, what kind of books do you like to read? Uh, I keep, I have reread some books, um, but it's usually somewhat adventurous. I like, I like, um, well, I guess almost every book is adventurous. I think that's fictional. Otherwise it would be boring, but um, that's what kind of keeps me to a book. I'm not a huge reader, so don't, don't hold me by that, but um, oh. I'm reading. One of my favorite books is, is called Wild, which is about a woman who's kind of lost in life, and then she goes on an adventure. Well, speaking of Wild, that's a perfect segue here, because from what I understand about you when you travel, I believe the quote that I saw was that when you open up your suitcase, it explodes. What is the story behind <laughs> Maya the Traveler. Oh, but it's just, I'm not very tidy. And I think I was talking with Lynn about this. That's where the quote comes from. That Lynn will actually put her stuff in the closets and hang stuff up. Whereas I open my suitcase and I just leave it in there because I have my system in the suitcase where it's like, okay, this is where the workout clothes are. This is where the golf clothes are. This is where the rest is. This is where the fancy clothes is. So I have that system, but then I also have to put the dirty laundry somewhere. So that just kind of ends up on top of something else. So then it's just messy. Okay, so as, as we're going to break, because we're going to come back and talk to you some more, I assume that you're connected with your phone right now. How about you grab your phone and show us what the room looks like, the explosion that exists around you right now? Okay. Um, well, so it's hot in Thailand, right? So we got some clothes that, are, that I've hung oh, up. Oh, my. They're just hanging. Um, well, it's not great. There's there are some some things in the bathroom too uh, that I hung up from yesterday that I haven't taken. It's, I've only been here for a day and a half, so it's not as bad as it could be. 
Um, well, that's good to know. At least, at least we've covered that that portion. My, how excited are you for the start of the Asian Swing and all the golf that you have before you? I'm really excited. I love playing in Thailand, especially. Uh, I think the fans are great here, and uh, it's also nice to not have to warm up as much because it is so hot. Are you, when you travel, we talked a little bit about adjusting your sleep schedule, which obviously is critical for anybody, but in particular, a professional athlete. What about the food? How are you when you travel internationally, whether it's Asia or anywhere else around the world, in terms of adapting to the local cuisine? It's a little bit trickier for me. I'm a vegetarian, so uh, sometimes there are not many options, uh, but I'm, I'm so used to it by now. Um, but I love Thai food, so it's great this week. A lot of stir fries, Pad Thai. Um, so other places it's a little bit harder. Um, but I mean, usually when we play in the U.S. so much, that's always easy. But uh, yeah, when we go to Asia, uh, especially, it's kind of a hit or miss. Did you find being a part of the European Solheim Cup team and coming back with a winning record such as you did and, and a victory in singles uh, distinctively, did you find that it's helped you from a confidence standpoint? Has it changed your perspective at all? Oh, for sure. Um, hitting shots like that in such critical moments when you're not just playing for yourself, um, when you feel like you want to do it for your team, not just for Sweden, like we used to do in European teams, team championships and stuff, or at college, this was way different because it's just one team against another. So you'll have way more people rooting for you and they will be way louder than uh, you used to. Um, so it, yeah, it just became a whole different thing. And especially with my putting, I noticed a huge difference because I think I just focused on making the putts and not anything else because um, technique, whatever it was, was just irrelevant. Uh, so I saw a huge improvement in my putting during that week. And I've been trying to um, pick out what was different that week compared to normal tournament weeks. Maya, as young as you are, and with the success that you've already had, surely there's a whole myriad of emotions that you carry with you as you're making your way as a touring professional. How much is gratitude a part of who you are as you, you step forward day by day? Oh, it's, it's kind of hard sometimes because you don't really think about it. You just think about the now, but then I wouldn't be here if I didn't get the invites that I got. Uh, at the first couple of tournaments, I got one from um, Skafta Open uh, from Reina, who I've known for a long time, and he's great friends with uh, the Kinholt family. And then I got an invite from a Creek House Management, and I am, I, I'm just so happy that they gave me that chance and um, that opportunity and for everything that I've gotten, because it's not, it's not a sure thing that you're inviting this young player and maybe it won't be great. Maybe they will perform and people like watching it. Um, but that, that set up my whole career after those two. And then just everything. I mean, when you look at and get to meet the fans or especially the younger, younger players, younger girls and boys that, um, look up to you that's that's huge but you don't think about it every day especially when you're in it but during this off season i have looked back on some memories and um kind of stopped to reflect on what i have been doing and uh and the best memories are always the ones where you feel like the fans are with you or that you can make a difference for someone Definitely important at that. And speaking of gratitude, we like to ask you about your sponsors as a way to say thank you to them for you coming on with us. So who have you aligned yourself with? I have uh, Nike and I have Ping. I went to school with one of the Solheim uh, grand, well, great grandkids, I guess. Um, so I've known them for 
uh, a while, even before I turned professional. Um, and I have tight list as well for the golf balls. Very cool. Now, you may have heard me mention this as we start to wrap up with you today, Maya, right before we went to break, that my belief is, is as a touring professional, you become your own business, your own brand. What do you want your brand, the Maya Stark brand, to represent to the world? Hopefully that I'm doing it for more than just myself. Um, I was talking with my coach, my golf coach and my mental coach a few years ago about motivation and um, why I want to become good at golf and and a bit of bit or well, a bit of where I get my motivations from is giving back. So I've had this goal forever to donate uh, dollars to charities. Um, so hopefully I'll be able to do that one day. Well, we are very much looking forward to everything that lies in store for your future. You've already proven yourself as a winner. And I think that is a trend that will continue in earnest. Maybe it will start this week in Thailand, but certainly it will happen very, very soon. There is little doubt. Thank you for taking the time to join us. And in your case, we can say good night from here and we hope you get a good rest and get ready to go. Thank you so much.